News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A triple homicide reported in the small Montana town of Belfry. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. Congratulations. You made it. It's Friday, April the 8th. 2016. Sky is clear. It's 35 degrees, possibly aiming for a record high today. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later in the newscast. Our news sponsored this morning by Bull's Eyewear. They offer some of the lowest prices in town on contact lenses. See Lynette at Bull's Eyewear, 2910 South Reserve. Our top story this morning, authorities say they're investigating the discovery of three bodies in a southern Montana home as a homicide. Carbon County Sheriff Josh McQuillan said he and two deputies found the three dead adults yesterday in the small town of Belfry after a neighbor requested a welfare check. Authorities say the neighbor had not heard from the people since Tuesday. McQuillan declined to identify them or their relationship to each other. McQuillan says a person of interest has been identified. Department of Justice spokesman John Barnes said that person was not in custody as of yesterday. Barnes says law enforcement does not believe there's any danger to the community of a little more than 200 people not far from Billings. The sentencing hearing for a former Butte Central High School band director took place in Hamilton this week. Where Valley County Attorney Bill Fulbright described the charges faced by Scott York, who was accused of sexually assaulting a student last March during a Class A girls basketball tournament in Hamilton. Uh, this particular defendant was chaperoning pep band and cheerleaders. Uh, while over here, uh, we charged him with providing alcohol to a group of five young ladies between 14 and 16 years of age. And then ultimately, after isolating a, one of the girls who had just turned 16, sexually assaulting her when she was extremely intoxicated. The victim of the sexual assault in the case gave an emotional testimony describing the aftermath of that assault. She twice tried to commit suicide since this assault on her. The uh, ridicule and being ostracized that she suffered through both her peers and in the community. Defendant Mr. York was a very popular band teacher, very gregarious guy, and so the girls reported this. They became the subject of a lot of ridicule and insinuations and so forth. According to Fulbright, York has been sentenced to 20 years in Montana State Prison with no possibility of parole for the first five years. York will never be allowed to teach in Montana again after his conviction. Red Lodge's chief of police has stepped down from his position amid tension between the city and Carbon County. Billings Gazette reports Red Lodge Mayor Ed Williams announced Wednesday that Police Chief Steve Hibbler had reached a mutual agreement with the city to end his employment on June 30th. His resignation will come months after Red Lodge police carried out a search warrant in Bear Creek that raised concerns about jurisdiction and communication among law enforcement departments. Carbon County Sheriff Josh McQuillan had claimed his office wasn't informed of the search before it happened. City officials have not yet selected an interim chief of police. Heavy equipment is in place to begin laying the infrastructure for the walking bridge over South Reserve that will connect the Bitterroot Branch Trail to the Missoula to Lolo Trail. Yes, they're actually building it. Missoula Redevelopment Agency Director Ellen Buchanan has details. They're going to start on the east side of Reserve Street where University Motors, Aaron's, and Loose Caboose are and start driving piles for those ramps and then we'll go across and work on the west side to get those pilings in and then we'll see steel and concrete going up. Buchanan describes the process of placing the bridge itself over South Reserve. The arched bridge itself will be a prefabricated piece that will be built off-site by a steel fabricator and then it will be trucked to the site and erected. The ramps on either side if you will be in place and then that's the one thing that will require um, a street closure of Reserve Street for the period of time that that bridge is being set just for safety reasons. Buchanan said as the time approaches for South Reserve to be closed while the bridge is put in place, local media will let you know about uh, detours. She said the final project is due to be completed in October. A Montana doctor whose license was recently revoked is facing additional drug charges in connection with a hit and run crash. The Montana Standard reports Anaconda police say they found 55-year-old state doctor Mark J. Catalanello trying to hide in a culvert after he fled the scene of a car crash in March. He was charged with DUI, obstructing a peace officer, and failing to report an accident. At a Senate Transportation Committee hearing yesterday, Senator Steve Daines pressed TSA Administrator Peter Neffinger on delays in screening equipment at rural airports. Uh, as you know, our security is as strong as our weakest link. Enhancements at rural airports strengthen the security of the entire national airspace. You know, the bad guys are going to find weak places to come in. 
At your confirmation hearing, I asked about the AIT scanners that were to be installed in 2012, and Montana airports are still without them. Neffinger responded by saying funding was the main factor delaying the placement of the AIT scanners. Those are full-body scanners. Danes went on to say the two Montana airports were in particular need of modern screening equipment. There's two specifically, um, and there are two important communities in our state. One is Helena, which is our state capital, that airport. They've been waiting for four years for the deployment of the technology. The second is Great Falls. Uh, let me just highlight the importance of Great Falls. The Malcolm Air Force Base is, uh, is in Great Falls. Uh, that is where we control one-third of the nation's ICBMs. During the hearing, Danes also discussed partnership screening programs where a private firm, rather than the TSA, performs the screening at the airport. Of the 21 airports nationwide that are part of the partnership screening program, nine are from Montana. However, the airport in Butte recently requested to return to the federal program. It was told if they did, there would be no local screening system at all. The Department of Public Health and Human Services is urging Montana adults age 50 and older to be screened for colorectal cancer. Cancer Control Section Supervisor Lisa Troyer says 40% of this pool is not meeting the screening recommendations. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in Montana. 83% of adults that have not been screened actually have health insurance. So we're really working to increase awareness about colorectal cancer. On average, about 172 have died of the disease each year. Troyer says screening and early detection can reduce the mortality from colorectal cancer by as much as 60 percent. Risk increases with age. So most cancers, um, most cases are diagnosed after age 50. The 10-year trend, we're looking that um, between 2009 and 2013, almost 500 Montanans were diagnosed with colorectal cancer. The goal is 80% screening by the year 2018. Weather watchers keeping an eye on today's high temperature because we could set a new record for this date. Meteorologist Bob Nestor with the National Weather Service just moments ago uh, gave me the details. Today's the um, earliest Missoula has ever hit 80 degrees. It's happened twice. Once in uh, 80 degrees in 1996, and uh, the record high of 82 set in 1977 for this date. And we um, have a chance of hitting 80 degrees only for the third time this early in the season. Today, the forecast high is 80. Nestor said April 8th has a history of being one of the warmest days in the spring. And one more deal. Hey, somebody out there is $100,000 richer, according to the Montana Lottery. Someone in Missoula purchased the winning $100,000 Powerball ticket. It was just drawn on Wednesday. Congratulations, lunch is on you. <laughs> Our news talk time now is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Sunshine and near record high temperatures today as we top out at the 80 degree mark. We'll be in the mid 70s on Saturday with an isolated thunder thread. We'll drop back into the 60s Sunday. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for Missoula's KECI 13.